The designing of springs is a very important facet of the product design. You can have the best product in the world. However, if that spring fails, that means that that product is going to have a warranty issue and it will not function the way you intended to function because it wasn't designed properly to begin with. Hi, my name is George Fournier. I work for Acme Monaco Corporation and my position there is Vice President of Engineering. Today, we're going to teach you how to make a better spring. There are four basic types of springs. The first and the, probably the most popular uh, are the compression springs. Well, the compression spring is a device that uh, has a length, a free length, and what happens is you press down on it and it, it produces a resultant force, and that force causes some reaction that causes something else to happen to make that product work the way it's supposed to work. There are some useful hints that you should know about before you get into the crux of the design. And the, the list are, are valid suggestions to improve your design uh, and, and to give you a better understanding of these springs. One suggestion uh, is when you design a spring, you should always design a spring with closed ends. Uh, if you design it with closed end and ground, well, that's going to be a little bit more expensive, but sometimes the spring has to be ground on the end so it sits square in its application. Otherwise, it could wreak havoc with the way it functions. One thing you want to avoid is having a spring with open ends. Number one, it's a nightmare for us to produce because what happens after it's produced, it goes in for heat treat, stress relieving, and they become all tangled. And those open ends are like magnets and it, after you're done you've got one big bale of wire. Another thing to consider when designing a spring is something we call a spring index. What a spring index is, is uh, a mean diameter or pitch diameter we call it. That's the center line of the spring around its diameter. That's either OD minus one wire size or ID plus one wire size. You take that value, divide it by the wire size and that's what's called a spring index. A spring sh index should not be below 3.5 and should not be greater than 13. Anything greater than 13, the calculations for springs uh, will not be as accurate, so you're going to have to make some adjustments. And anything below 3.5, you can't coil it. If you use three springs side by side, when you compress them, you'll get triple the amount of force. However, if you put one spring on top of the other, then um, you will see a third of the force of each spring. In other words, springs in parallel, you'll get three times the force. Springs in series, you'll get one third the force out of each spring. Uh, the other thing when you're designing a spring, never specify the forces at a deflection. Always specify the forces at a definite height. That way when we check it, we compress that spring to a definite height and then read the force. Otherwise, um, it's not as accurate. Show you about the stress side of things. The formulas have all been rewritten so that you solve for one of the unknowns, whether it's the mean diameter, the free length, the rate, the loads. They've all been rewritten so you just solve for the one that you're looking for. It makes it a lot easier. If you want me to share these formulas with you, all you have to do is call and, and we can discuss your design and I can send you the formulas and maybe even send you uh, a copy of the manual and uh, we can take it from there. While springs are often the least expensive part of your assembly, failure can bring costly machine downtime and product rejects. To assure higher quality and longer reliability, we offer a comprehensive spring design and analysis program which evaluates physical and mechanical requirements, manufacturing feasibility, and in-use predictability. We are experts in compression, extension, torsion, and beam springs.